The earthquake in Japan sends oil to its lowest level in two weeks on speculation that demand from the world's third biggest economy will drop. Our next guest says other energy prices will be affected and this could be a pivotal event in the country when it comes to natural gas. We're joined now by Tom Petrie. He's vice chairman of Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. He's a top oil and gas deal maker working on more than $140 billion worth of deals. Tom, it's always good to talk to you. Uh, is LNG the biggest winner out of what is a horrible situation in Japan? Well, you're right. It is a horrible situation. It's it's certainly a beneficiary. Uh, we were we were dealing with surpluses of both natural gas and LNG uh, in the world, given all that was going on. This will tighten up the supply demand. And frankly, uh, the earlier discussion you had about alternatives, they're coming along. They're a logical beneficiary, but uh, natural gas is really needed for when the sun doesn't shine, when the wind doesn't blow. And also, the, those alternatives won't really uh, become in the aggregate meaningful until uh, an, another decade or two or more beyond. So in the near term, it's natural gas and LNG. You're talking about there uh, this sort of short-term trade that we're seeing with that pop in, in solar energy companies. You think that's just right. uh, I mean, near term? Well, that's right. It, it, the, Logically, people think, gee, this is the most environmentally uh, benign uh, set of opportunities, so they should benefit from the nuclear concerns. Uh, that's a logical conclusion, but it, in its economic substance, it's going to take a long time for it to accumulate to something that really matters. Well, talk to me about crude oil, because I understand, you know, even as we introduced you, the bet is that economic growth will slow in Japan in some way, therefore the demand will fall off. But we're still seeing nearly 30 percent of domestic refining capacity in Japan shut down because of the, the earthquake and the tsunami. So isn't that going to, in some ways, uh, increase d demand, at least internally? Uh, you've put your finger on it, Margaret. This is a complicated situation to make a, a clear call, unfortunately. There are lots of cross currents. Um, you know, for this to come along at the time that we had all this Middle East unrest upset many of the conclusions that you'd think about on the Middle East, the impact of the Middle East unrest. And yes, this will free up oil that will want to go somewhere. And uh, so there's going to be a very turbulent period. Uh, the I would say the retreat in crude oil prices uh, in itself is logical at this point. Uh, and. And there was a big fear premium in oil, uh, as a number of people were commenting uh, from the OPEC countries. Mm -hmm. But today, I mean, were it not for these horrible uh, events in Japan over the weekend, the lead story may be what we're seeing happen in Bahrain today, which is Saudi troops, Gulf Cooperation Council troops come into Bahrain uh, because of the political unrest there. I mean, how much of a threat to supply could that pose? Well, uh, Bahrain by itself, not a lot, but obviously uh, it's right next door to Saudi and the concerns there about how much empathy there is among the Shia in the oil fields. Well, clearly one, the rest of the Gulf is concerned enough to send in troops, right? Uh, that, that appears to be the, the report of the morning. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, we're looking at, at crude here at home at just short of $100 a, a barrel. Obviously, uh, Brent also climbing. Before any of this unrest, you were telling us that the fundamentals were there for oil at 100 for gas at $5 possibly this year. What, what has changed in that? Well, it's still, we're still in a range that, that makes sense. Remember, uh, when I was saying that, I, I'm pretty sure, because uh, I almost always say this, look, we're always working about a range, and 90 to 110 or 80 to 100 are, were typically the ranges we've dealt with for the last 12 to 24 months. Um, and that's still the case. Uh, I think from what you hear about the impact on the global economy, uh, global growth, will be only modestly affected here in all likelihood. We're going to get lots of little disruptions, but where there's uh, negatives, there's also offsetting positives in some cases. So I still expect uh, oil to, to be in that in a range, probably 80 to a little over 100 
uh, 80 plus percent of the time as we look out over the next 12 to 24 months. You're headed to the Gulf next week. What are the questions you want answered? Well, I want to get a sense of just where uh, where things stand on the uh, on the unrest and the spreading of unrest. Uh, I'm also uh, looking at uh, what we what we see on the LNG side because I think I do think the uh, the need to use natural gas in power generation uh, in, in a much greater way in the in the U.S. and in most of the developed economies uh, is underscored by this tragedy. All right, Tom Petrie, thank you so much for joining us today.